สวัสดีครับ Good evening everybody and good afternoon Stephanie um, and thank you for joining us uh, we're here today to talk about investment in UK property um, Boy first put this idea to me a little while ago um, about ways in which uh, they could maybe through their their business combine the idea of uh, tourism and travel with some uh, some some business and some investment and we got talking about investment in UK opportunity in, in UK property. Um, and I said to Boo, "Well, I know just the people you should meet, um, and that is um, the people from Sandstone Property, um, where Stephanie is an investment director. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to talk to you about why UK property represents an excellent investment opportunity. Okay, um, it entails a, a relatively low risk. There is always risk in investment, but UK property is a relatively low risk investment." And at the same time, you can generate high returns, both in terms of the ongoing returns from the rental income and in terms of the appreciation of the value. Unlike Thailand, where there are restrictions on non-Thai nationals investing in Thai property, in the UK, property investment is open to anybody of any nationality. Okay, so you are free to invest in UK property from Thailand, even though you are not UK citizens. You can invest from outside the UK, as I've just said, and we're going to talk today about a way in which everything can be done for you. Trying to do it from overseas might pose certain challenges, um, but we've got a service here where everything is done for you. Real deals will be brought to you, so you don't have to go out and search for the deals. Okay, Sandstone will bring deals to you, and at the same time, you can invest in those deals through your own UK company. Okay, so you're not joining any kind of collective investment scheme, a unit trust or anything like this, these will be your properties held in your company. But before we get into that, let's just introduce ourselves. I say Stephanie is our main speaker today. Um, I'm here basically, I'm a friend of, of Bui and, and, and Kun Pati. And as I mentioned, Bui asked me about UK property and, and, and investment opportunity. I actually invested in my first property um, back in the UK when I, when I came back from Asia in 2017 through Sandstone. Okay, and that's how I got to know Stephanie, and that's why I thought to bring Stephanie into this meeting today. In terms of what I do now, I'm an investor. I have a, a, a portfolio of UK properties. I also invest in stocks and foreign exchange, and I'm investing in the, the brave new world of cryptocurrencies and, and the blockchain. My career before that, I was in banking and business advisory. I spent more than 30 years doing that, of which 17 years were in Asia, um, primarily in corporate banking and risk management, that included five um, very enjoyable but quite tough years in Thailand through the financial crisis between 1997 and 2002. Um, outside of my investment activity, I'm involved with charities in the UK. I'm a trustee of two registered charities, and I'm also actively involved in work uh, resettling refugees from the Middle East and Afghanistan um, into the UK under a government uh, sponsorship scheme. Um, in terms of my professional qualifications and background, I've got an honours degree in economics, and I am still an associate of the Chartered Institute of Financial Services in London. So that's me very briefly. But what I'm going to do now is hand over to Stephanie, um, because I said she's our main speaker today. She's, she's the real expert, and she's the one that's going to be able to help you find good investment opportunities in the UK. Hello, everyone. So my name is Stephanie Morgan, as um, Mark has said. Um, um, I am a director here at Sandstone, and my career has basically all been property. I'm passionate about all things that have to do with property, so investment and management services. I own a property portfolio in the UK, so I actively invest in properties myself in the same way in which I'm going to chat to you about in a bit. And I also have a stock portfolio in the US where I'm from. In another life, I was a teacher of English. I actually uh, taught in Thailand um, and China as well. So definitely uh, love Thailand and, and cannot wait to, to get back soon enough. I love to travel and I love wine, both drinking it and learning about it. I have a Master's of Science in International Management, which I earned in Bristol here in the UK, and a Bachelor of Business Administration, which I earned in Florida back in the United States. 
So thank you very much for that, Mark. Um, as I said, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna share some slides with you all. Um, we would love to have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions as I'm speaking, please feel free to put them into the chat box directly to Mark, okay? So not to the whole group, send them straight to Mark um, and we can then do a bit of a question and answer session at the end of the presentation, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get started now uh, and hopefully you enjoy uh, what I am going to speak about. Let me just share my screen. Right, so as I said, welcome to Sandstone. Um, we are based in Edinburgh, so you'll see the beautiful cityscape of Edinburgh here on, on my screen. Uh, we're very proud to be based in Edinburgh. It is our home and we are the proud management agents of over 500 properties in the city um, amongst other cities as well. So what we're gonna talk about today are how we can help you to invest in the UK from abroad. So at last count, we have clients in over 40 countries. So I assure you, you are in very good company. So we help clients to invest and to create safe and affordable green homes to rent. It's very important to us um, that we are offering our tenants a really nice place to live that is safe, dry, warm, and also that is good for the environment. So one of the biggest things here at Sandstone is that we really, really care about the environment. For every property that we rent, we actually plant a tree. Um, we've got a 25 year track record. We have presence in 10 university cities. As I said, we have clients in over 40 countries around the world at last count. We hold some accreditations, including ARLA, NHBC, and IIP Gold. Um, the last one being Investors in People, which we're very, very proud of. Um, and also, we are looking to become carbon positive in 2021. This um, actual house here, or this property, is the one, the very first one that we ever had in the portfolio. But in 1987, we actually had to sell it in order to continue with the business, but bought it back. So it's sort of the, the first property and we still have that in the portfolio now. So we source, renovate, furnish and manage. We do everything under one roof. This is a full service solution. It means that even though you're in Thailand, you know that you are working with a company who's going to take full responsibility for your investment and make sure that it is as easy and hands-off as possible for you, okay? Now, our investment process is basically, as I said, a full service solution. So we offer sourcing, we work in regional cities in prime locations, and we're going to be sourcing on and off market opportunities. We've got expert property sourcers on the ground in all of our cities and their only job is to make sure that they pick the best properties for our clients. We then renovate our properties and we do this on time and on budget. This means that our renovation costs are fixed. So whatever we present to you as your budget, that is what you will pay, not a penny more. We have an in-house furnishings team who will put together a bespoke furnishing package for your property. It is hotel style, so it's hard wearing and quite uh, attractive. And we get it direct from the manufacturer here in the UK. We then have a management service, which has a major focus on occupancy and student rental market. So we don't rent to families. We only focus on young people because these are people who are very price insensitive. They've got their mom and dad paying for their rent for the most part. So we're able to put the rents up in a significant way every year, okay? Our interiors are quite lovely. We combined traditional features with modern interiors, a very, very high safety standard, okay? And this is just to make sure that everything inside is new, but we're keeping those traditional features as well, okay? 
So we're going to talk a little bit about the market now. So over the last 35 years in the markets that we work in, in the United Kingdom, house prices have grown by 7% per annum on average. Okay. There is a well-documented shortage of housing. The UK has never achieved their build criteria that the government puts out. It just cannot build enough homes for the amount of people that need them. And it is a small island, so land is scarce, okay? Universities are growing. It is a big, big deal for people to send their children to university in the UK from around the world. So there is a very big and growing demand for university education in the UK. And students are low risk because they're supported by their guarantors, which more often than not are their parents. Okay, so we found over our 25 years that the large regional university cities are the ones that give the best overall investment returns. Okay. So you'll see here just a bit of a graph which shows UK house prices year on year. So you've got just before the financial crisis here in 2008 and you'll see that prices dropped significantly but ended up going back up, a little bit of a dip, 2012 to 2014. But overall, over all of these years, you will see that the Halifax, which is more um, Scottish-based, 7.6% per annum, an increase, and the nationwide 7.3% over all of this time, okay? You'll see here that this is the financial crisis and this is coronavirus. The UK somehow managed to come out even stronger on the property market than ever before with coronavirus, okay? The reg residential property in the UK is very resilient and has very low volatility. When the banks stopped lending in 2008, there was an impact for a year, but it was very short. And actually our clients' rents went up significantly because everyone was looking to rent rather than buy. And also, Coronavirus has had no impact, as I said, excuse me. Um, so it is an actual really great, safe place to put your money in property, okay? House prices have risen, rents rise, and this is the trend that we have found over our 25 years. So what we found is when you structure your purchases with bank financing, over our 25 years, our clients have achieved 28% per annum on returns, which is a very, very robust return rate. Now, being that you are all in Thailand, if you do not have any UK credit history or a British passport, you will find that it will be necessary for you to buy your property in cash in the first instance, and then in the second instance, after about six months, you can put financing on it in order to release that money and invest again, okay? And that is something that we absolutely will be able to help you with, okay? So we're gonna do cash first, renovate the property. Once you have your UK credit history, we can then get you lending on the property, okay? So we combine low risk and high returns. It's very important to us that we get you the best properties and the best locations in order for you to make as much money as possible, okay? So our track record in case studies. So these are three clients um, of ours who have invested over the years. So we've got our first client, Ian Johnston. He first purchased the property in April, 2002. He said that it was better than cash in the bank and his portfolio is now 10 properties. His investment philosophy is long-term capital growth and maximum returns. His average capital appreciation per annum on those 10 properties has been 7.7% over these years. And his returns are 30.8% per annum, okay? Next client here um, is one that came to us about five years ago in 2016. He was looking for good returns. He has 25 properties now. The aver average capital appreciation for him is 6.7%. 
and return to per annum of 26.8%. Okay, and that's in only just five years. And then of course, we've got Peter Grant, who is the owner of the company. And he first started buying in uh, 1997. He used a bonus to buy the first property with pension in mind. This particular portfolio that he has, because he has several, has 17 properties in it. His investment philosophy is that he likes to have his portfolio break even day to day, year to year. And for him, it's all about returns. His average capital appreciation is 9.5% and returns at 38% per annum. Okay, so these are actual portfolios, live portfolios that we hold that are phenomenal, okay? Now, these are some locations that we're present in. So we presently are sourcing property in Birmingham, Bristol, Dundee, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Manchester, and Nottingham. We are not sourcing in Liverpool or Stirling at the moment, but we do have an existing portfolio under management in those cities, okay? And as I said, the large regional university cities give the best overall returns, okay? Now, something that I do wanna to touch on with our service is that you can grow a portfolio buying a property in all of our cities and you still just have one point of contact within the business, okay? So unlike other companies who might not have that far reaching ability, we're able to help you grow a portfolio across Scotland and England all under one roof, okay? Now, our values, so, our people are amazing and you can trust us to deliver. Great customer service, communication with speed and clarity and solutions, not problems. Our culture means that we take personal responsibility. We listen to client feedback. We build friendships and we focus on safety, including of course, COVID-19. We are very ambitious for our clients and for our business too, which results in ideas and innovation, continuous improvement, delighted clients who reinvest and tell all of their friends. And of course, happy tenants who re-sign their leases and tell their friends about us. So we've got 75 staff members thereabouts just now. And this is some of our um, senior director team. So our core values here at Sandstone are customer service, communication, personal responsibility and solutions, as well as innovation, safety, growth, and green making a difference, okay? Now, this business started with one property and we have now renovated over 3,000 properties. And mostly all of those investments were off the back of happy clients telling all of their friends. So it's very important to us that we help you to achieve the goals that you want to achieve in order for you to be thrilled and help us to grow as well. And that's okay. how we've arrived at where we are today because I'm a happy client and I told Bowie about it and then we've set up this webinar. So exactly. living of how the system works. Exactly. So going carbon positive is one of our big initiatives right now. What some people don't realize is 52% of all global warming actually comes from property. So we obviously have a very big role to play. So in 2006, we started this journey well before it was very popular to do so. And we cut our carbon footprint by 30%. By next year, we're aiming to go carbon positive. So that's by cutting emissions, focusing on green energy, planting trees and green transport. So we've actually changed all of our company cars to Tesla's. So we're really trying to do everything that is good for the environment. So we also set up a tree planting charity in 2006. And so far we have planted over 600,000 trees. Okay. And of course we can provide further information if you're interested in our carbon positive journey. So in summary, our business model is tried and tested over 25 years. We target traditional property in 10 cities, rented mostly to students and young professionals. Our parents act as guarantors for their students. Our one-stop service makes investing really easy. 
particularly if you're so far away. And clients actually now have the ability to invest personally by creating their own portfolio or via, via a collective REIT. So we do have a real estate fund that you can also invest in. So there's options and all of them are under the sandstone umbrella. Okay. So that's all to say that hopefully I will be able to say one day, thank you for investing, for reinvesting, and of course, for telling all of your friends. Okay. Um, Stephanie, can I so kick off the questions, you... please? Um, I'm sorry? Can I kick off the questions, please? Um, sure. And before you do, Mark, um, yeah. everybody else, please feel free to submit your questions so we can go through them now. Okay. Go on. Okay. A couple of questions for you. Firstly, um, you said that you have portfolios in Liverpool and Stirling, but you're no longer identifying investment opportunities in those cities. Why, why is that? Well, in Liverpool, the reason for that is because the council is very keen to stop the investment purchases and bring more local families and couples into housing in the city centers. So it's not an environment that is very favorable towards landlords. And as you know, we only source traditional property. So if we can't source traditional property and the only opportunities are new builds, it doesn't fit into our model. Now in Sterling, Sterling is a beautiful historic city that is centered by a castle. And the buildings there are very grand and beautiful, but they're very old. And they have found that because there's so many of them tenanted, there's not as much care being put into those buildings. And the council wants to preserve the beauty of Sterling by, again, incentivizing owner occupiers to buy those traditional properties. So it's really a question of where the best opportunities lie. And... Can you just expand on, on what you said there a little bit, please? You, you spoke about focusing on traditional properties. Um, now I know a lot of overseas investors, they have opportunities to invest in new build properties. There's lots of developers go around Asia and they host exhibitions and they encourage people to buy off plan. What are the advantages of buying traditional property as opposed to buying new build properties? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, as you know, we survived the financial crisis, which we are very proud to be able to say because we are a homegrown investment company that has, you know, become massive. And what we found during that crisis was because there was so many new builds available and they were all the same, they had no differentiators between them. A lot of them were lying empty, even though there was a demand for rent, because there was so much direct competition within the buildings that it was hard to achieve the rents. New builds do also tend to be in secondary locations within cities. The traditional properties have been here for a long, long time. They're going to continue to be here for a long time. And that means that they're typically in the center of the cities. The other thing that's really important is that traditional properties are far larger than new builds. So you can reconfigure them, you can make them into, you know, from a two bed to a three bed by easily just switching the existing layout. Whereas with a new build, they are actually quite, quite small. So I think that with traditional, because we make them so new inside, you get the best of both worlds. You get that heritage, that British heritage alongside a brand new, renovated, low maintenance property. And how do they compare, do you think, in terms of investment returns? What we found is that traditional property has a far higher capital appreciation rate than new built because of the size, because of the locations, because of the fact that they cannot be replicated. And traditional properties tend to have far higher yield growth because they're so different to each other. Whereas new builds, there might be 200 identical flats in one building. The market gets flooded. Yeah. 
Okay. And, and, and how does the, you, you talked about having sources in all these cities. How does that process work? How do they filter through and, and work out which are the really prime investment opportunities to take to clients? How does that process work? That's another great question. So I actually used to be a property sourcer for Sandstone. Um, I've sourced property in Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester, and Nottingham. So I can say to you with a lot of experience that the utmost care goes into selecting these investments. Our property sourcers have robust relationships with estate agents and contacts in each of their cities. Every day, their only job is to assess properties using our bespoke buy to let model. They will then offer on the property subject to us finding a client and do a whole host of due diligence. So they're going to have a surveyor go, an architect, structural engineer, a damp specialist, roof specialist, and an asbestos specialist to make sure that there's no trip ups for our clients. We then have the property signed off by compliance. And at that point, we're able to share the opportunities with our clients. There is a lot of care that goes into it and a lot of hard work. We don't drag our clients through that pain. We just share the opportunities with them. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, there's no questions in the chat box. Um, what we can do, if, if people would like to ask questions directly, maybe please just raise your hand and then um, Stephanie will be able to come to you and um, you can come on screen and, and pose your question. If you prefer to use the chat box, please do that. And then I will put the question to, to Stephanie. But um, just while um, you're thinking of, of, of questions and, and possibly typing them in the chat box, um, another question, if I may, Stephanie, I, I understand that most of your clients um, are overseas. Now, I actually first met one of your colleagues when I was living out in Asia. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm a client, but I'm now living in the UK. But I understand that I am in a, a very small minority in terms of uh, your overall client base. What do you see typically as the challenges faced by people when investing from overseas and how easily overcome are those challenges? Gosh, um, <laughs> there's many challenges. Um, I think one of the biggest ones is going to be the time zone, um, because obviously you need to be able to communicate um, in real time. But besides that, I would say that, of course, finding the opportunities are it would be very difficult from overseas. Um, renovating would be nearly impossible. Managing would be very difficult. Um, but also things like helping to find a solicitor, helping to get that mortgage finance in place. All of those things are trip up points, but our service is designed to take away that pain from clients and make it very, very straightforward. Uh, I always like to say that actually the only thing that you should be focused on is picking the best properties for you and we will take care of everything else. Okay, thank you. Um, there is a question from Kun Pimbun. Um, do you have any photos that you could show us, please, Stephanie, of some of the properties um, within the portfolio at the moment? Ideally, yes, we, we do. We do have some photos, and um, just just to be clear, it is our intention to get in touch with all of you to have follow up meetings. Um, but one thing that we can absolutely share is our YouTube channel with you, and that there are hundreds and hundreds of videos on that YouTube channel, uh, which which show you exactly what the renovations look like. So I will um, I'll go ahead and put that in the chat box before we finish. That will be helpful. Um, do any of those videos have pictures before the um, before the renovation or are they only after renovation shots? They're only after. However, um, we are we share all of our due diligence and things like that on any given property. So you will be able to see what the property is like in its current state. The other thing that's pretty cool is we're always adapting new technology to what we do. And we offer all clients 360 degree tours. So as soon as your property is ready to start renovation and you take ownership, 
Your contracts manager will take a 360 degree video of every single room in the property and they will share that with you before, during and after the renovation. And I must say, those are so super cool because it makes you feel like you're in the property. And how does it work once the property is let and up and running? What's the process whereby there's regular reviews of how the, por the property is performing, the condition of the property and so on? Again, sorry. Yeah, I'm just, so that's what happens prior to letting the property. So we go, we come through the renovation process and people get to see what the property looks like. Um, what then happens in terms of ongoing reviews as, as to how the property is performing, what the condition of the property is, what's happening to the value hmm. of the property and so on? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a um, accredited uh, management service that's won many awards and we have different departments within the management side of our business. So we've got a dedicated repair service. We've got a dedicated tenant help desk. We've got in, uh, inspections that get taken, you know, taken at least a couple of times a year. And we just try to have as many touch points as possible into the flats and houses to make sure that they're being kept up by the tenants. We do give our tenants a lot of responsibility because this is something that we're offering to them as a lovely safe home and we would we would want them to honor that um but we do take care of everything if there is a repair that needs doing you will get an automatic message from the repairs portal your repairs manager will get it sorted for you and we will bill you back so even even after the initial investment is done you will have one point of contact who will make sure that everything is running smoothly on your behalf Lovely, thank you. I've got a question now from Kun Natirut. So what is the starting investment for properties in the portfolio? So if you're looking to buy in cash, I would say that you would need comfortably so that you can have choices, about £250,000 for a property. Now that's going to obviously pay for the purchase price, your renovations, and also what we call your setup costs. So setup costs are things like your furnishings, your legal costs, any tax, things like that. Now, what we would say if you were able to get finance is you would need about £100,000 per property. However, please keep in mind that once you put your finance in place, you'll be getting a large chunk of your cash back so that you can reinvest. Yeah, that's around mm -hmm. 11 million baht that's required to get going to make a cash purchase. And then after six months, refinance and take a a big chunk of that money back out, ready to fund your next investment. But 11 million. Correct. So a question now from Kun Anawat, who, uh, good evening, Kun Anawat. Nice to see you again. He's a, he's a lawyer, Stephanie. His question, mm -hmm. what is the legal limitation for ties to invest in the UK? Major any majority shareholder requirements or are Thai nationals able to hold full ownership of the property directly? Or I'll add to that yes. directly through a limited company. Yeah, you can own property in your personal name or your limited company. We do recommend that all clients buy in limited companies these days because there's a lot of tax uh, benefits. Um, I won't get into that too much because, as I say, structure and things like that are very personal. Uh, however, part of our job is to help you to make sure you're structured properly so that you can buy as many properties as you'd like. But getting to the main answer to your question is any nationality can buy in the UK. Thank you. And then we've got a couple of questions from uh, King, Kun Kingyut. Uh, first one, um, are you able please to give more details about the returns? I mean, you've spoken there about some high level numbers. Are you able to break those down between returns from the rental elements and also returns from the capital gains of the property? Yes, again, every single property that we would offer out has a financial planner attached to it. And that financial planner will show you exactly how those returns are calculated. Now the returns assume that you're going to hold the property for 10 years minimum. They assume a capital appreciation rate at 7% per annum and a rent increase rate at 7% per annum, coupled with 75% loan to value mortgage. Okay. So every single property does have that planner on it. And again, on follow-up calls and when we're looking at actual opportunities, I'd be more than happy to take you through the financial planner. Thank you. Um, and then there's a follow-on question from Kun, Kun Kingyut about um, taxes involved. So I guess he's looking here at 
stamp duty and corporation tax and personal income tax if people are holding it directly rather than through a limited company. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I, w I wouldn't wish to get too much into tax because it's a bit boring, but um, there are tax implications structured correctly in that limited company with your mortgages in place. There's no tax or very little tax to pay over time. Now, as far as stamp duty is concerned, with every single opportunity that we offer, we offer something called an investment overview. And on that investment overview, you will see exactly what your, your stamp duty liability is gonna be. Depending on if you buy in Scotland or England, there's different rules, but we are all about transparency. So you will know exactly what your liability will be, okay? And as you said, Stephanie, the, the, the best way generally, subject to individual circumstances, but generally the best way is to hold in a company and in a company, the current rate of tax you'll pay on your profits is 19%, okay? Um, but that's after deducting all of your expenses. So your management fees, your mortgage interest, any repair and maintenance cost, uh, you arrive at the net profit figure and you're paying corporation tax at 19%. Okay? Correct. Um, but everybody has their own you know, structures to have. And as I say, if we can't help you, we kind of can do level one or level two tax stuff. If we can help you, we will be more than happy to connect you with our partners at Deloitte. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then a question from Compatra Porn. What does it mean for credit records? If she went to university in the UK, will she have a credit record in the UK? Credit record means if you have a UK bank account that's active, a credit card in the UK, a loan and or mortgage in the UK. That's what credit would be. I would say if you came for a university, depending on how long ago it was, you may still be traceable, but it would depend on how long it's been. Again, something that we can talk about one-to-one. -one. But opening a personal bank account is usually a very good way to get that credit record going. And then if you're yeah. looking to refinance after six months, you'll then have it, that established credit record. Another way to do it would be to get a mobile phone contract, have a UK phone number, because um, once you've got that mobile phone contract and you're making monthly payments, that then gets reported on the credit register. Correct. Um, and that's something that we would advise you to do, you know, as soon as possible um, so that, that that timeline can start so that you can then go ahead and get your mortgages on your property. Because that is when you're going to make the most money is when you're using those that bank's money in order to grow your portfolio further. Yeah. And there's a follow on question here about company set up um also from compatible porn um yeah we can do that for you um we've got a firm of accountants they will uh, set the company up for you that can be done i think the company's house the, which is the, the the registrar they say within 48 hours usually it comes back the next day so that's a very simple straightforward process that's very easily done don't worry about that until you found a property find a property and then straight away we can introduce you to the accountant because Sandstone will need to know the name of the, the company in which you're buying the property, but you know we can wait 24, 48 hours. The property can be registered against your personal name uh, in, in, in the very short term, but then very quickly we'll have to tell them which is the name of the company that's buying the property. So find the property, Correct. then we can get a company set up very quickly. It's very cheap uh, to set up a, a company as well. It doesn't, doesn't cost very much at all. So don't, don't yeah, be able to do That's right. Um, but as I say, we will be in contact with everyone who's attended in order for you to have a meeting with myself or my, my colleague called Charlotte. Um, between the two of us, we will be able to answer any and all questions that you may have. We'll be able to structure you properly for your own circumstance, and we will hopefully be able to find you, you know, the properties that you're looking for. Okay. Um, there's, there's nothing more in the chat box for the time being, um, Stephanie. So, yeah, please, any more questions, please do type those in. Um, uh, there's something I'd like to tackle, um, which is the idea of uh, investing in a property um, without physically visiting it. I, I, I did it myself when I bought my property through you. I, I, I hadn't been in the property when I, I bought it. And... Um, it's a, it's a strange feeling in some ways to buy a property and, and, and spend that sum of money without actually having visited the property. Now, I've got very comfortable with that over the years. Is my experience unique or did you think other people face the same challenge initially when trying to overcome that, that feel that they need to, to, to go and actually physically see the property? 
No, I mean, we, we're a trusted partner to our clients. I would say 99% of clients will never see their properties. This is an investment. You're not buying it to live in it. It is all about the numbers on a page, getting that feeling that it's the right opportunity for you. So I always say to clients that you really need to depersonalize this. Um, as long as you are comfortable with what we're offering, which is a world-class service, which has been tried and tested over 3000 times, then you are in a safe pair of hands and we will take care of all of it from here. Now I do very seldom, but sometimes get clients who might be visiting the UK from abroad and they might want to meet with me at their property that they've bought just so that they can have a look because it's quite fun to do so. But the vast majority of our clients are very far away and they're certainly not going to be getting on a plane to come have a look at their flats or houses in the UK. And how does the process work? So you're, you're, you're going to you and Charlotte are going to conduct these one-on-one uh, -on -one calls. Um, yep. How does the process work from there on in, in terms of um, identification of opportunities and, and how quickly do properties quickly move? How much time would, would people have to consider opportunities as and when you present them to them? Yeah, so we have properties come on and off of our books every day. Um, because that's what we do. We, we only source one type of property. So as soon as we find good ones, we'll add to the pot. And of course, clients will be buying uh, every day as well. So we do not reserve anything for anyone. Um, we will offer it to you on a first come, first serve basis. Of course, you would have the opportunity to ask questions and things, but we have to be fair to our other clients who are considering opportunities. So as soon as you find something that suits you, um, we would then ask for a reservation fee of £25,000. The £25,000, it books in your renovation. Um, you may or may not have heard that there is a labor and supply shortage here in the UK just now. And the last thing we would want is for you not to get your renovation started on time. So when that £25,000 is received, the property is then yours. Until then, it will still be in play with other clients. Okay. And just to, to I mean, you talked there about um, your, your coverage across a number of different cities. In those initial calls, will there be an opportunity for people to discuss the, the different cities so they can identify maybe their, their preferred cities such that when an opportunity is, is presented to them, they're then able to move quickly because they know they want to invest in Bristol. They know they want to invest in Edinburgh. Yes, absolutely. So what we'll do on our one to one calls is I will get to know you all and your investment aims, you might come to me and already have an idea of where you'd like to invest. But perhaps I'm listening to you. And I think hmm, we can add another city in that might work. And it's my job to help create your brief, but also open you up to other great opportunities. Uh, as I said earlier, you can have a property in every city if you'd like. Um, it's just about what you're trying to achieve personally. Um, but we will talk about all of the cities, we will nail down a brief. And when we do, I can then start sharing opportunities with you. That's an interesting point because I know a lot of investors in the UK, they, they focus on a specific area because they're doing it themselves. And that's the area in which they're working. They get to know the market. They're there on a, a regular basis. They know builders, contractors, et cetera. But working with someone like yourselves, you've got the advantage that you can diversify your, your portfolio across a number of different cities. Um, because yeah, you're absolutely. On the ground yeah. in different locations. It's definitely a differentiator for us. I haven't found any other company yet who can offer so many cities under one roof. Um, it definitely is an exciting thing for clients because they feel as if they have an opportunity to expand, diversify, spread their risk across the UK, but still only have their one trusted property company um, as well. Um, but I think at this point, I think we've answered a lot of questions and we have gone through a lot. And if there are any other questions, I am more than happy to take them on one-on-one -on -one calls. As I say, please expect to be called by one of my colleagues in our sales support team within the next sort of day or two business days and collect your questions and we can go through them one-to-one. -one. Yeah. There's no more questions in the, uh, in the chat box, Stephanie. So um, 
I think, Boy, uh, would you like to say a few final words, Stephanie, or shall I pass back to Boy to, to wrap us up? Yeah, so um, again, thank you everyone and to Mark and to Stephanie. Um, I hope that everyone find this um, session very useful and interesting. And um, I believe that um, I will, they, they already know all the participants here um, that I'm gonna ask for that feedback. So please expect me to give you a call. And um, some of our participants um, text me that they cannot make it today. So maybe we have to uh, host another session as well for those who cannot make it today at the very last minute. So I think this is it. Let's um, end here and call it off and um, talk uh, after this session uh, to all participants today. Thank you everyone again. Lovely, thank you. And good, good evening, everybody. Thank you, speak soon.